Welcome back YouTube, thanks for checking out another Fat Guy Builds. In this episode we're going to make my Mustang handle 10 million times better with a set of sway bars and adjustable end links. So let's get to this. Jack up the car, remove all four wheels. Here's the part number for the front sway bar. Here's the part number for the front sway bar links. For the sway bar, we're going to disconnect from the shock first. You're going to need an 18 on the nut and an 8 millimeter to hold the front of it. You're going to break the nut loose and then you just go like this until you get the nut off. For the bottom part of the sway bar, do the same exact thing and uh, just take the link all the way off because you need to have it off to get it out of the damn car. For the front sway bar, we need to move the air box out of the way. So if you have a factory one, it's going to be a little different than this one. But more or less, you need to undo your hose, mass airflow uh, sensor plug, harness, and remove the bolt that's over here in this corner by the fender. And then all this should be able to come out. Now you can see that we have access with the air box out to the sway bar mounting bracket. There's two on this side, and obviously two on the passenger side. To get the two on the passenger side, one, you go through right next to the head, and you will see it there. The other one, you'll go right here. This is pretty much right next to where your overflow is. You're going to use an extension and a wobbly 18 millimeter. You're going to use a panel popper. You need to pop the clip that holds the brake lines, and then there is a little plastic shield here. There's two clips for that. They're the ones where you pull the center out and then pop them out. So you're going to need a flathead and a panel popper. To give me a little more flexibility, I removed the brake line clip from the uh, strut tower here. On the driver's side, uh, the rear bolt is sort of shrouded by the alternator. So you're going to have to use a box wrench with some leverage to break it loose. Then use an 18 millimeter box ratcheting wrench to take it out the rest of the way. Easiest way I found to get it out, remove your belly pan. That way one person can wiggle it out over there and one person can keep over here um, keep it from hooking onto everything. So I'm going to start on the passenger side feeding up the sway bar until it stops moving. Now we're going to go on the driver's side. You're going to wiggle the other side while rotating it because you want this to clear this opening here. So once you got it cleared you can feed it some more like that and now we can pull it the rest of the way from the driver's side. So now you can see the bottom end is sticking over here. So you're just gonna wiggle and of course I'm stuck on the radiator hose so I'm just gonna slide that. The little mounting bracket is hitting the radiator hose. So you're just sort of gonna wiggle stuff around and you're going to end up pulling it down this way. The hard part about getting the factory one out is that the shackles are built onto the sway bar. You can't pull them off so the eyelet parts constantly get stuck on things and make it difficult. You're going to take the grease that it comes with and just lather it in there. Lather it in there. Lay them out as they lay this out as it was in the car lay out the new one so that you put it in the right direction last thing you want to do is have it in there backwards or whatever so just do it like this and now we're gonna put it in we're gonna start with this side putting it in the driver's side and I'm not gonna put any of the bushings or anything on to make it easier to slide in and then I'll do it from underneath the car and put the bushings on we're gonna start the reverse way we did to take it out so you're going to go up and over and you're going to feed it 
feed it in like so. Just keep feeding. Just keep feeding. When you get on this side, you need to clear the get the sway bar where it's roughly the same amount sticking out on both sides. So now I'm gonna take the bushing and I have the split section here. I'm gonna reach up, open this split, slide it over the bar. Instead of doing the driver's side from underneath, it was easier to do it from the wheel well, but the passenger side was easier to do from underneath. Now set the shackles on top of the bushings. Hand start all four 18 millimeter bolts. Just get them in loosely first. I found it's easier to do the rear bolts through the wheel well and do the front bolts through underneath the belly pan area here. I'm going to be running turbos plus I want the engine bay to be more compact. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have my buddy push the sway bar as close to the engine as possible to give me more clearance here where the exhaust pipes and everything are going to end up coming from and then I'm going to tighten them down from above so he's going to be underneath pushing it that way and then I'm going to tighten down the four bolts then I grab the torque wrench and I'm going to torque them down to 90 foot pounds so you can't torque this one down with a torque wrench you're going to have to use the wrench on wrench trick and you put it on and then you yank on this wrench to tighten down get you get you your leverage so that was a pain in the ass we have the stock end link the new end link you start with this totally all butted together then you're gonna measure from here center to center is nine inches so from the center of here to the center there is nine inches so we need to get that from center to center to nine inches. So you're gonna hold these so they don't move. And then you're gonna spin this out so that it's equally spaced in the center. And you're just gonna keep doing this until you're at nine inches. Then once you're at the nine inches, you're gonna grab these jam nuts and you're gonna semi-tighten them right now just so it doesn't move just do it by hand and then we can take this and put them into the car install the sway bar end link this one's gonna face this way the bottom one's gonna face towards the center of the car go through the hole and you're gonna have the washer and then the nut to tighten the sway bar end link you're gonna use a 17 for the nut hold the center with a six millimeter allen the first side we're just gonna lock it down at factory height a length I mean which I showed you in the step before so you're gonna need I think it's a 19 I don't have any open box wrench 19 three quarter does fit though so you're gonna use a three quarter you're gonna hold the center and then you're gonna tighten the jam nut against the center <clears throat> And so this will be the primary side. We're going to go to the other side now, and I'll show you how to match it so there's no preload. We're on the other side now, so you're going to want to spin the center. If you feel tension, you need to find where it just goes loose like this, which means there's no tension between this side and that side when nothing's happening. And then you take the lock, locking ones, you lock it, and then tighten it the same way you tighten the other side. You hold it and tighten it. So these locking rings that you're going to put on to keep the sway bar centered, you're going to have it touching the bushing, and um, then you're just going to tighten it down on each side. This one was easy to get to this way. The other one I'm probably going to get to from above. Once you have both of those latches tightened down on each side, we're going to go ahead and put back the fuel line and put back 
this uh, little shield uh, around the alternator down there. Here's the part number for the rear sway bar. Here's the part number for the rear sway bar links. The rear sway bar end links are similar to the front, except instead of holding it with an eight, you're gonna need a six millimeter Allen key, and then you're gonna put that in the center and do the same thing to take off the end links as you did in the front. To take the rear sway bar out now, you're gonna remove these two bracket bolts on each side, and they're gonna be a 13 millimeter. Once the four bolts are out, it'll sort of just sit on the exhaust. So this one's pretty easy. You just finagle it and pull it out. So on the rear, you have these two shackles and bushings. There's a split to obviously go over the bar. So what you're gonna do is take this grease that comes with it and you're gonna rub it all in a nice smooth layer inside of here. And there is like texture inside to hold the grease. Now that you have the bushings all full of grease, what you're gonna do is slide them over. So you're gonna grab the bar, make sure this hump is in the same spot as a factory one. And you're gonna lift up the bar, split this apart, put it in, put the shackle over it, and do it on the other side. Now you're gonna take the new one, slide it in to the same area, and then you're gonna have a buddy help you Lift it, start the bolts by hand, and then tighten them down. What you're going to do here, because there's slots, you're going to want to center it on the old position, which is pretty much centered on the dirt lines. If you didn't clean it, and if you did clean it, it's pretty much centered on the eyes. So there's the same amount of gap between the bolts on both sides. Here's a comparison between the materials, factory or aluminum. And the aftermarket ones are aluminum and steel. And it's a three-piece design. Center to center on these bolts is uh, five inches. So I'm going to set the aftermarket ones to pretty much five inches. Installing the rear links, you're going to put a washer on each first. You are going to pick which hole you're going to use. I'm going to use the um, outside or inside most because that will give me the stiffest sway bar um, option. If you pick the outside one, it'll be the softest. Center is standard. Once you got both sides put in, you got a washer on both sides, then you got your nut. You're gonna have a 19 millimeter to tighten the big nut and six millimeter to hold the center. So on the rear, you're gonna do it just like the front. You're gonna set both of them to roughly factory length. Then you're gonna lock down the one side Then you're gonna get this one to where it's nice and wiggly which means there's no tension pulling on this, so they're neutral. If you had it like torqued like this, now there's tension, so you don't want that. You want it like this, and then we're gonna tighten down the locking nuts. Then you're gonna lock it down by holding the center with a 17, and you're also gonna use a 17 on the lock nut on the top and bottom, so you're going to hold the center and tighten the two nuts on the top and bottom and lock everything together. One thing I'm going to have to do now is this doesn't really line up with anything because it has this notch here. So what I'm going to do, take an angle grinder, grind off this edge here, and then I'm going to put it back. So you can see now, ah, 
hot's hot. <laughs> you can see now there's no lip. So you slide that over, put the washer, put the nut, and then tighten everything down. One last thing we have to do is put the shackles to keep side to side movement down, but you're going to want to center it first. So I'm going from the flange, the sharp edge of the flange, because the tape measure hits it good, to the center of the pole or center of the sway bar. And I'm at five and five eighths. And then now on this side, I'm five and five eighths. Before I started doing this, this side was at five inches, that side was at over six inches. So um, I got it now to where they're equal and we're going to put the shackles on the ends. Basic logic will tell you if your tires are off the ground and your suspension is as far down as it will go, then we can push this until it touches the frame, back it off just a little bit, and now this will never touch because this side is very far away and this side is obviously not touching now because I just moved it away. So when the car hits a bump, it's going to rotate this way towards the front here and this will get closer to here, but it's not going to hit. So back it off till it touches then just pull it a little bit away from the bottom side of the back so I'm at the back of the car you see that this is touching right against the bushing do that to both sides this side is going to also rotate the sway bar is going to rotate the same way so just make sure you're thinking about which way the uh, sway bar is going to tilt that way you do the same thing but more or less they're going to be angled the same way on both sides identical 